Well, if you don't know me, my name is Mary, and I am married to uh, Jason Powell, and he is one of the pastors here at Harvest. He oversees the high school ministry, and that's always a lot of fun. It keeps me energetic, so if I start moving around, you'll know why. I'm always around high school kids. Um, and we have a sweet little boy named Zachariah who will be four in the fall, and we've been married for almost eight years, so that's a little bit about me. But when I found out that um, Pastor Greg and Kathy and Tiffany were putting on this mommy conference, I was so excited. My heart just leapt when she told me about it. And I thought, yes, because we need help. Do you ever feel like that? I mean, do you ever just wake up in the morning, you're exhausted, your hair looks like this, and you're like, God, I just need help, help. And that's how we feel sometimes. And one of my favorite verses is Psalm 121, verse 1. David says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heavens and the earth. God promises in his words, mommies, that he is our help. God is our help. He's not just anyone, and he's not just someone. He's God, and he's here to help us. So where do we get that help from God? Where does it come from? It comes from his word, daily time in his word, personal time with Jesus. It's not by reading every mommy book on the market. There's a lot of good ones out there. It's not by scrolling through the mommy boards on Baby Center or listening to Dr. Phil or Oprah. It comes from God and his word. So we're going to look at three points this morning, three little takeaway points. And we're going to give you a little handout as you're walking out. So don't forget that because that'll kind of help you remember. So number one, we're going to look at a stressed mommy, snippy, snappy, and definitely not happy. Number two, a blessed mommy, blessed, joyful, full of peace. And thirdly, a prepared mommy, protecting your personal time with the Lord. So the first point, a stressed mommy, snippy, snappy, and not happy. And this is what mommyhood is going to look like if you are not protecting your personal time with the Lord. How many of you can relate with that little phrase there? Snippy, snappy, and not happy. Definitely, because I can too. And if you'll just turn quickly, if you have your Bibles, to Psalm chapter 73, we're going to look at a really cool little portion of scripture. We don't have time to read the whole chapter, so write it down. And today, tomorrow, whenever you get a chance, I want you to read through the whole chapter because it's really important. But I'm going to kind of paraphrase a bit of it for you in a nutshell. We kind of jump into the chapter here. I love the Psalms. I love the Psalms, especially as a mommy. And we jump in, and the psalmist kind of goes on from verse 1 to 16 on a depressing rant. And as you're reading it, you're just kind of like, oh, I mean, you just start feeling it. You're like, I'm, I'm kind of depressed too. You know, yeah, it, life isn't fair. And that's kind of what he's doing. He's, he's just saying, God, I'm looking at these wicked people over here and, and their lives are just prospering. And, you know, is me being godly really worth it? That's kind of what he's saying. And so after 16 verses, you're kind of like, whoa, you know, you're, you're kind of feeling a little down. Do you ever feel like that as a mom? Do you ever have those mornings when you're just, you're done? I mean, how many diapers have you changed in the last hour? I mean, we're going on 100 pampers here. How many times has that child spilled that juice? It doesn't matter what I do, right? My son, he has a thing for spilling his milk. You feel like I'm never going to sleep again. My days of sleeping are over. And then look at that perfect mom over there. Just look at her. She's in and out of Target by 8 o'clock. She's room mom. She's soccer mom. She's perfect mom. She has dinner on the table every night by 6 o'clock. And then what happens? You turn to Pinterest. And then you really get depressed because your kitchen doesn't look like that. 
and you don't have those curtains, and your five-year-old's birthday party was not that cool. And before you know it, you're a disaster, right? Right? I mean, we've all been there, and I'm in tears on the couch like, <laughs> you know, and, and, and then God looks at us, and he's saying, Mommy, Mommy, where does your help come from? So after the psalmist goes on this depressing rant, 16 verses, half a chapter. If you look at verse 16, he makes a pivotal change. He says, when I tried to understand all of this, all of these things he was thinking and these thoughts, it was oppressive until I entered the sanctuary of the Lord. Then I understood their final destiny. We see a drastic change here in the psalmist's attitude. And then he goes down, and in verse 25 and 26, these are two of my favorite scriptures as a mommy. Who have I in heaven but you, God? The earth has nothing I desire but you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Wow. Did you see the change? He went from depression to freedom. From stressed to blessed. And mommies, if we're not in the sanctuary of God, if we're not protecting our personal time with God every day, we're going to be depressed, we're going to be stressed, and the world is going to be an ugly, ugly place. And I know because I've been there. I'm not up here this morning saying, oh, I've just been the perfect example of spending time with God. I, I've got it down. I'm the mom that's up at five. No, I'm far from it. I used to do my personal time with the Lord every morning from the time I was 16 to the time I was like 25. I mean, an hour, 45 minutes every day before work. I was religious. And I, I really thank my mom and dad for that because they instilled that in me. I'm so thankful. But then a screaming bundle of six pounds and 13 ounces entered my life. And devotions went out the window. And a thousand poopy diapers later, and countless sleepless nights, and being a 24-hour caretaker for my child took over. And I just wanted sleep. I mean, don't get me out of bed. If that child is going to sleep, you better believe I'm going to be right there in the cover sleeping too. And so I didn't want to get up early anymore. I was exhausted. And maybe you don't have a baby, but you've got three kids running around. Maybe some are in school. Maybe you've got toddlers. Maybe you have teenagers living at home. Maybe you have a job, and you're just pooped. But then it just turned into sheer laziness. And instead of reading my Bible and praying, I wanted to scroll through Instagram. I wanted to go on Pinterest. I just wanted to zone out. I don't want to read. I don't want to pray. I just want to zone out for about a half hour. And so I'd be scrolling, scrolling. But I wasn't spending time with the Lord. And what was the result? Well, I was like a witch on a broom flying around the house, okay? And everybody could see it. Everybody could see it. I was snippy, snappy, and I definitely wasn't happy. One of my favorite books, if you don't have it, you've got to get it. And Tiffany mentioned we're doing 25% off in the bookstore today, so there's no excuse. It's called A Mom After God's Own Heart by Elizabeth George. A Mom After God's Own Heart. This really revolutionized my life. In the book, she makes a wonderful quote. She says, what does it take to read through the one-year Bible or any Bible? It takes about 10 to 12 minutes a day. That's roughly the same time as a quick internet session. That's one half of a good conversation on the phone with your sister, mom, your bestie. That's one third of sitcom on TV. That's one sixth of a television talk show. And that really brings it into perspective, right? 10 to 12 minutes, that's it. We spend 10 to 12 minutes doing a lot of things but reading our Bibles. So mommies, ask yourself this morning, are you tired of being snippy and snappy? Do you want to be a blessing to your husband, to your children? Do you want to be the mom that God wants you to be? And I know all of you are screaming out inside, yes, otherwise you wouldn't be here. So this is awesome. So our second point is a blessed mommy. You want to be a blessed mommy, right? Joyful, full of peace, ready for the day. 
And God's word promises us that we can do all things through Christ. But it's only through Christ that we can do all things. It's only through Christ that we can be blessed and full of peace. And just as we saw the psalmist's perspective change, we'll see our perspective dramatically change. You will see joys in the midst of the hardships that you're facing. You'll have more patience to deal with those daily annoyances like spilled milk and dirty diapers and and all of the things that you have to deal with. And my husband always knows, and I mean always knows, when I haven't spent time with Jesus. I'll be flying around, yelling at the dog, yelling at our son, yelling at him, and he'll so sweetly and gently say, babe, did you spend time with Jesus? Like, was it that obvious? No, no, I wasn't. And then I realize I'm not the only one that suffers. Everyone else suffers when I'm not spending time with Jesus. Everyone else suffers, even the girl at the checkout stand at Target. Because if she's not rolling those things through pretty quick, I'm like, come on, girl, let's get on it here. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. So I challenge you, mommies, to make God's word number one in your life, and you'll be a blessed mommy. You'll be a blessed mommy. And why is that? Why will you be a blessed mommy if you're in God's word? Well, God speaks to each and every aspect of your life through his word. You don't need anything else but God's word. Books are helpful, but you don't really need anything else but God's word. Are you burdened? Are you burdened, mommies? Do you feel like there's just a weight on your shoulders? Psalm 55, 22 says, cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never allow you to be shaken or moved. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, casting all your cares on him, because he cares for you. Are you worried? Are you worried about your finances, about your marriage, about your children? Psalm, uh, Philippians 4, 8 tells us, don't be worried. Don't be anxious about anything. But by prayer and supplication, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Do you want peace? I know I want peace. And later on in Philippians, it says that God will supply all your needs In Luke, there's nothing impossible for God. Isn't that what you need to hear? Isn't that what you need every day? And God will help you. But that help isn't going to come from anything else. It's not going to come from our parents or friends or Oprah. It's going to come from God himself. So we know that we don't want to be a stressed mommy. We know that we want to be a blessed mommy. So now that we've got that, let's be a prepared mommy So how do we be a prepared mommy? How do we protect that personal time with the Lord? Well, mommies, you got to be prepared. And you have to be prepared to make that daily time. Not once a week, not once a month, every single day. So here's a couple of practical tools. Number one, pick a time. Find a time that works for you, okay? Maybe it's easier in the morning for you. Maybe you're an early bird. I wish I was an early bird, but I am not. My husband will tell you I'm a bear in the morning. So maybe it's the morning. Maybe it's the afternoon. Maybe it's nap time. Maybe it's after the kids are off to school. Maybe it's after everyone's in bed. Pick a time. And I used to be a stickler about spending time with the Lord in the morning. And I do believe that your mind is the clearest, your heart is the readiest, but sometimes it's just not practical when you're having a nursing infant, when you've got a husband to get out the door. So don't worry about when, just do it. Do it and make it a priority. Number two, remove the distractions, mommies. Remove the distractions. Now, let me ask you if this is what usually happens to you, because this is what happens to me. I'll sit down, I'll open up my Bible, and I get a text. And I'm like, oh, well, I just, I'll just, I just, okay, I'll just answer it real, 
really quick. Oh, I've got an email. Oh, I better open that. Just one second. I'll open that email. Oh, and there's a link to that article I've been wanting to read. Okay, I'm going to click on that. Oh, and I, you know what? I need to check and make sure the weather's going to be good today because I was thinking about going to the beach. Okay, I'm going to go on to Google Weather. And then I left that load of laundry in the wash. Oh, so you get up. Then you run over to the washing machine. You put the clothes in the dryer. And then, oops, I better set out the chicken. It needs to thaw before dinner time. And then the list goes on and on. Does that sound kind of familiar? You get a phone call. There's a knock at the door. Something crazy happens. The house goes on fire. I mean, it's just something happens. And you're like, and then the whole day goes by. And you get in bed at night. And there's your Bible over there on the table. And you didn't read it. It happens to every single one of us. It happens to me almost every day. We've all done it. But what is the biggest source of distraction? I'm going to call it on the table. It's a wonderful little thing called a cell phone. It is the biggest distraction in our lives, Mommy, because it's a magical portal into Instagram and Pinterest and all of those wonderful things, right? And if you can reach that cell phone when you sit down to spend time with the Lord, you better believe that if you can reach it, you're going to be distracted. If you can reach it, you're going to be distracted. Even if you turn it face down, because you're going to be like, let me just make sure I haven't got a text. (laughs) Oh, and that verse just reminded me of something I wanted to look at on Pinterest. I just, okay, does that sound familiar? Because I've done it. And I'm like, put that phone down. Sometimes I just want to throw it across the room. And I think maybe God would want us to do that sometimes too. So put your phone on silent and put it in another room. Phone calls, text messages, and Pinterest will all be there when you're done reading your Bible. So put it away. So now that we know that we need to pick a time, we need to prepare, we need to remove distractions, number three, develop a plan. Develop a plan of attack, mommies. You've got to get a plan of attack. And maybe some of you mommies are thinking, okay, Mary, I understand that I need to have personal time with the Lord, but I really don't know where to begin. I've never done devotions. I don't even really know what that means. And I don't know where to start. And I totally get that. So I'm going to share some things with you that I do that have really helped me stay focused in my devotion time with the Lord. And that really just kind of give me an outline. I think outlines are good for us. So number one, I read my Bible. I read my Bible. And mommies, if you don't do anything else, if you don't do anything else, read your Bible. Read it. Pull it out. So where do you start in the Bible? Do you just kind of open up and start reading? Well, one thing my husband shared with me that's been so helpful for me is pick a book. Pick a book in the Bible that you've been wanting to read or maybe you're interested in. A couple of months ago, actually it was last year, time goes by so fast, I went through the Proverbs and I just read a proverb a day uh, until I was done with Proverbs. It was I mean, it was just mind-blowing how God spoke to me through the Proverbs. I couldn't believe it. The practical application for every day on gossip, on being a good wife, on being a good mom. I was just amazed. So I did a chapter a day until I was done. And so pick a book, maybe Proverbs. Maybe start with a gospel like the book of John. Read about the life of Jesus. Oh, you'll be so encouraged. So pick a book and read a chapter every single day until you finish that book. And mommies, really, it only takes about five minutes or less to read a chapter. It's, it really it doesn't take that long. So number one, read your Bible. Number two, you could pick up a daily devotion. There are some wonderful daily devotions in our bookstore, and they'll have ones that go for the whole year, 365-day devotions. So basically, it's a little portion. It's a a daily thought, a daily encouragement. Um, It's very short. They're usually just one page, half a page, and it'll give you a thought for the day on Christian living, on um, faith, on prayer, on so many different things. And there's two that I want to recommend to you. One of my favorite ones, just for everyday life is called Morning and Evening by Charles Spurgeon. Morning and Evening by Charles Spurgeon. It's in our bookstore. They have an updated version. It's a little bit easier to understand English, so you don't have to feel lost in kind of the old school wording. It's awesome. And there's one for the morning and for night. So it's a double bonus. You get one in the morning and one at night. 
If you're going through a very difficult or painful time in your life, and you just need an extra boost from the Lord, you're just feeling like a desert, and you need a boost of faith, you need a boost of trust in the Lord, and you are just burdened and weighed down, I would suggest a devotional called Streams in the Desert. And it's just like the title, Streams in the Desert. And it is personally carried me through very many dark and painful seasons of loss and of heartache. So, Streams in the Desert, that's also in our bookstore. So, read your Bible, maybe get a daily devotional, and number three, pray, pray, pray. You can never pray enough. Pray, pray for your children. If you were in the last session, Diane uh, spoke a wonderful, wonderful message on prayer. It's so vital. Pray for your kids. Pray for your husband if you're not married. Pray that God will help you to be a single mommy. Pray, pray, pray. God is there, mommies. God is there listening to you. In his word in Jeremiah, God tells us that if we come to him, he will come down and he'll listen to us. Don't you love that? Out of all the billions of people on earth, God says that he's listening to you, you as a mommy, and he wants to listen. He's excited to listen. And it doesn't have to be formal. You don't have to, you know, okay, just pour it out. Talk to him like you talk to your, your friend. He just wants to hear your heart. Pray, pray, pray. So read your Bible. Maybe get a devotional book today in our bookstore and pray. And lastly, mommies, the last thing I can encourage you with in these last couple minutes is realize, this is so important, realize that Satan does not want you to do this. You've got to know that. This is the last thing that Satan wants you to hear today. The last thing. Because Satan wants you to be stressed. He wants you to be snippy. He wants you to be snappy. He wants you to be at your wit's end, frazzled. That's what he wants. He loves it. He loves it when you're flying around on a broom. He loves it when your kids are like, watch out for mom. He loves that because if he can take mom down, he can take the family down. If he can take you mommies down, he can take the kids down, and he can take your family down. You've got to realize that this is a spiritual warfare. And some of you might be thinking, oh, that's a little hyper-spiritual. But just wait. Tomorrow, when you try to have time with the Lord, you just wait and see what the enemy tries to do. Those text messages are going to be coming at you like arrows. The phone's going to ring. The baby's going to scream. The dog's going to run out the gate. Something's going to happen. And you're going to be like, where is this coming from? Getting out of bed earlier is going to be like giving birth all over again. You're just, you're going to be like hitting the snooze. Oh, one, ten, a hundred times. You're like, I'm not getting out of bed. I'm just I'm so tired. It's going to be so hard to open up your Bible. Wait for it and remember this word. Because now you'll know when it comes. You'll be like, oh, wait, this is Satan. This is an attack. This is the enemy. Be prepared for it, mommies. Be prepared. You might even experience more trials. Things might start to go wrong, and you're like, wait a minute, I thought things were going to be great. Well, they're going to be better for you, but that doesn't mean that trials aren't going to be there. The enemy's not going to take a day off, and he's not going to let you open this Bible, so it's a fight. But the encouraging thing is that you're not doing it alone. You are not doing this alone. You have the God of heaven and earth who smashed Satan when he died on the cross. Right? Jesus crushed Satan's head when he died on that cross. So he has no power over you. Nothing. God says in Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10, Fear not. Don't be afraid. I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold you up with my righteous right hand. Mommy's God is holding you up, and he's going to be your help. So when those attacks come, you've got God behind you. So you can say, you know what, Satan? God's got my back, 
and he crushed you when he died on the cross. So I'm going to get out my Bible. I'm going to read. I'm going to pray. I'm going to fight for my personal time with God, and I'm going to be a blessed mommy, not snippy, not snappy, not unhappy. And instead of being stressed, mommies, you're going to be blessed. Instead of being snappy, you're going to be a lot happier. And instead of being discouraged, you are going to be encouraged. Amen? Let's close in a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much for the truth of your word. Thank you so much for these, these things that we can draw from you, God. And I just pray a blessing over every mommy in this room. God, no matter where they're at, that, God, they wouldn't feel guilt if they have been snippy and snappy because, God, I've been there so many times. And, God, I just pray that you would encourage their hearts that they're forgiven, they can start fresh today, and they can be a blessed mommy who protects her personal time with the Lord. So, God, give these mommies strength to face every day, strength to get in your word, strength to pray, strength to be that blessed mommy. We love you, God, and we give the rest of this day to you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right.